Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So this one's been a long overdue video. Now, I was going to do like an ultimate delving guide, but I was like, that's too long. And I'm doing a written document for that as well. So at some point, that'll come out with all information in one place. But uh, anyway, for the time being, let's talk about Delve. Let's talk about the current farming strategies, some of the prices in the market, um, and some of the topics that we're going to cover off here is what is it? If you're new to Delve, let's talk about that. What are biomes? So you hear the term biomes ticking around, but what does that actually mean in Delve? Um, how do you start Delve uh, and leveling it from early mapping? So a bit hard for me to replicate right now, but um, there is a way to do it. Uh, probably I'd say from white tier maps is when I start. And then basically it's like a springboard between the two, but I'll talk you through what I generally do and my, my mindset around that. Um, how do you level up your Voltaxic Generator? A lot of people don't know how to prioritize this. Uh, so let's talk about that. As you can see, I'm a little behind in some areas. But anyway, we'll talk about that. Some strategies for delving. So, you know, do you keep pushing down? Do you go horizontal? We'll talk about that and some different methods that you can approach each of those with. And some resources that you can look further if you want to look at different formats beyond what this video is going to cover off on. Uh, currency farming strats. So resonator currency farming. How much is it worth to you? What can you do with it? Uh, fossils, what are they worth to you? Where do you find them? How do you target them? Uh, and then we'll talk about some of the boss drops in the game as well. In particular, my favorite one, which for anyone who follows the channel is Crystal King. Uh, and the reason why I love Crystal King so much uh, and also make a lot of currency from it. And then basically by the end of this video, we'll also, I'll do a bit of a run through on screen and show you exactly how I approach different strategies. And we're going to talk about a couple of the builds that you can take down into Delve initially. But obviously, you can take most builds down. This is Divine Ire, and this is currently sitting at about 500 depth, and probably make it to about 700 by the time I'm done. Maybe further if I get a Mage Blood into the character. Anyway, let's get into the video and talk about how you can make Divines from Delving. Oh, and by the way, I'll make a comment here, and this one happens a lot. What is the per hour rate that you can make Divines in? completely defined by your character, the amount of time that you invest in the delve, how deep you are, and whether or not you have good RNG or not is entirely up to the game. I would say on average, maybe four to five div per hour at about five to 600 depth, uh, maybe a little more. If you get a Crystal King, anywhere up to 40 div from an Envy drop, um, that's the, my best estimate, but there's no exact math like every farming strategy. It's completely dependent on your skill level, your build, and how tanky you are, and whether or not you can efficiently do the content, or if you can only do it slowly. That's going to change from build to build, to person to person. Anyway, now let's get into the video and talk about Delve. Okay, so what is Delve? Well, it's available from Act 4, so we go to Highgate, and you'll see a character by the name of Nico, our bestest little buddy that we're going to farm with for a very long time. Just ignore my Delve bear, that's an exclusive MTX just for Delve. Alright, so this guy is going to pop up in Act 4, and you're going to see these things called Sulfite Deposits when you go into the mines. This is going to give you access to early Delve, and I'll make this comment, we're not going to start delving in the campaign, we're going to start delving from white tier maps, because delving in the campaign is almost a waste of time, for anyone who knows anything about Delve, it has some of the hardest content in there and will challenge your character earlier. And I've never recommended to start delving early to anybody before you finish the 10, 10 act campaign because you need to balance things like resistances, armor, and your other defensive stats before you can really walk into Delve. It will challenge your build straight away. It is hard content, uh, can be easy, but as long as you follow a good, a good guide with a good build, with a tanky build, um, then I'd recommend starting it from white tier maps, but this is where we start Delve. So let's actually go into the Delve map and have a look and see what that looks like. Okay, so to get to Delve, you're going to go into the mine encampment here in your map, right? It'll take you to the Azerite, uh, the Azerite mine, sorry. And then we can have a look at the subterranean chart. Now, when you first start, you're going to go down in the mine, and the first thing that you're going to be met with is a column. Depending on your level, it will scale. I'm just going to go up and up and up and up and up. As you can see, I've done a little bit of delving this league. All right. So you're going to start delve at the very top here, right? We're at the very, very surface of the land. Okay. Abandon and camp or whatever it is. And then basically this will slowly scale down as your character develops and levels up. So the game actually scales this from the start of the game. Um, and then you get to like, you know, by 
you know, whatever level 80 or whatnot, then the game just goes, okay, cool. You've gotten deep enough and you're good to go. Uh, so this is why I always say don't start delving straight away because if you start delving up here, you waste your early soul fight when your character could be down here. That being said, you know, this might be easier for your characters, but your drops progress as you progress down the mine shaft. And as you can see, like as low as 100, you can get grand architects and things like that. But we'll talk about that in this video later down the track. So basically you get to delve earlier on. Um, and yeah, that's basically, uh, then from there, all you do is simply progress. And as you can see, you progress down. And all of these nodes in here have fossil drops, armor drops, azurite we'll talk about after. Uh, that, that's included in one of our strats. You can get curse rings here with mute wind retreats. Um, you have breach spawning up in here. You can get fire rings in here. So your uh, your um, curse enemies with flammability on hit rings. Um, all this sort of stuff drops in here. Animalistic nodes as well. So if you want like you know uh, feral's fur style thing with cat uh, with aspect of cat or aspect of crab, these drop in here. As you can see, there's ample chaos rings, chaos items physical and physical dot items. And then we have special fossil nodes in here as well as boss fights, as you can see by the lich here. Uh, and then, yeah, pretty much everything you look through, more liches here. We'll talk about the lich after. Anyway, Delve is fundamentally an infinite dungeon. You can just push down as much as you want. You can farm either horizontally or vertically, uh, and you can do whatever you want. There's no particular, no particular wrong or right answer when it comes to Delve, but it's a great piece of content. But that being said, the builds that can survive down here need to be a little bit more chonky to be able to handle this because as you progress lower, it gets nastier and nastier and nastier to the point where you can get one tap by bosses without any difficulty whatsoever. Anyway, that's what Delve is. Delve is awesome. So let's talk about what biomes are. Okay, so now we know what Delve is, what are biomes? All right, so you'll see on the map here, all these patches. You'll see the stats on the patches as well. See how it says Abyssal Depths, you'll see Magma Fissure, you'll see Frozen Hollow, you'll see, you know, what else we got? Uh, petrified forest. All of these are referred to as what are called biomes. Now in here you have special biomes referred to as either primeval, um, you have abyssal, uh, or you have, um, where are you? Oh, there we are, Val Outposts. Now these particular bi biomes have the probability to drop one of three bosses depending on the type of biome. The biome that we really wanna target the most will be primeval ruins. Part of this is because we can get a lot of azurite in here as well, and azurite will feed into what I'll explain in the next farming strat. But what biomes also provide is not only different stats that you have to fight, like maps. They're basically, if you look at biomes the same as maps, and you look at how you can see the modifiers in the corner on the screen, just there, right there. Um, and then the other thing that biomes dictate is the type of fossils that you can get dropping as well. So there are a whole heap of different fossils that have varying different weights as far as currency goes and we'll talk about it. okay so what you can see here is why delve is significant so number one hollow fossils are worth 80 chaos fractured fossils are worth 54 chaos glyphics they're down but they're worth 38 chaos and they sort of go up throughout the league in particular in the first three to four weeks they tend to be at their highest point of i guess saleability and potentially even into the second month of league because that's when people start minimaxing builds and for anyone who knows anything about crafting fossils are really good for crafting and that's why we need both resonators and fossils and we can look at resonators as well uh which are here as well and we can see that there's a slow incline all the prices are going up through the roof uh, which is fantastic, in particular the ones we like are one socket resonators, uh, which basically means you take your fossils and slam your fossils into them. But this is why biomes are significant in this game. So what biomes allow you to do is target which fossils you actually want to acquire among other things. So for example, um, you can get specific nodes and we'll talk about those specific nodes that drop these particular fossils. Shuttering tend to be in side areas uh, and also pop up in other different biome areas too. Uh, and these are very targetable because they are for attack speed, essentially, um, which is really good for like bone shatter characters and things like that. Uh, Tangled aren't really worth anything at the, at the current point, nor a bloodstain. No one really cares about these. Um, 
But faceted, fractured, glyphic, and hollow, hollow being the best, 80 to 90 chaos are the ones that we would like to target. Also perfect uh, fossils, which drop pretty commonly. Uh, so you can see them in sulfur vents and they also drop in, uh, in fungal caverns as well. Um, these are usually about eight to 10 chaos as well. And they drop in stacks of like anywhere up to three to five, depending on the depth that you travel at. And the further down you go, the stacks of fossils increase and the volume of fossil special fossil biomes increase as you dig deeper into delve so essentially you know as, as you go down the more common as you can see they they pop up there'll be a, a fractured i think in or faceted in molten cat molten fissure um but yeah that's fundamentally so the deeper you go the higher the clustering and the volume of fossils um crop up um, but bearing that in mind paying attention to your biomes can also result in getting better yields of fossils as well as better yields of currency as well. That's more or less what biomes are. Biomes just dictate what type of targetable content can pop up as far as fossils, um, but they also dictate whether or not a particular boss can spawn in an area, i.e., you know, Lich's Tomb spawns in Abyssal City, biomes and whatnot. That's more or less what it is. Think of biomes similar to, like, maps, if you're just mapping. That's what biomes are in Delve. But just be wary of the color patching in here as well. And that'll dictate the type of fossils that you find in side areas and different things like that. Okay, so question that I get a lot here is, how do you start Delve from early mapping? It's pretty straightforward. So basically, you're going to start mapping. And it's hard for me to tell you just how exactly I would do this since I'm so far progressed. You're going to start mapping and you're going to start hitting these points. Now, one strategy that you can invoke uh, will be getting the right Atlas tree set up here. So basically, and sorry, we'll cover off on the Atlas tree that I use currently as well. Uh, so more or less what I generally tend to do at the very start of League is I'll go up and I'll pick up these nodes here and go mining partnerships. Now, in between that, I'll have a stack of, uh, stack of orbs to then turn on and off all hands as I do different maps. Now, all hands can impact you in a negative way when you start delving earlier on. What it can do is restrict your ability to generate master missions or correct missions, sorry. And correct missions are one element of how you get your map completion up. So if you're not progressing maps very quickly, you're stuck in white tier maps for a very long time, then yeah, turn all hands off. But generally I'll take these nodes first and I'll come up and grab Mad Devotion first as well. Now I've got Wandering Path on, so you can't see what I'm doing. Then as I hit my map completion, I just straight up target all of my Sulfite nodes earlier on, which are in a straight line. So they're relatively easy to get to. And obviously this node being sulfite and fusion being the most important because this allows you to have just native sulfite from map completion. Now, this is more or less my, my strategy earlier on. And then I'll just cycle on and off all hands until I can sort of sustain sulfite. And all it really comes down to is you run a bit of delve um, and then you come in to your Voltac, you get, you go down, you collect some Azurite. So when you're early on, you go and collect some early Azurite. First thing that you're going to level up is going to be your Sulfite capacity. So that would be number one. Um, the second thing that you're going to level up is going to be your Light Radius. The third thing that you're going to level up is going to be your Depth. The fourth thing you're going to level up is going to be your Flares. And the fifth thing you're going to level up is going to be your Radius of your Flares. So how effective your Flares are in order to keep you alive in the darkness. Now, obviously I was a little bit lacking there as well. Now, as you go down further, you're not so interested in capping this out. And this tends to be like an activity of like what you, you put of balancing it. So think of balancing your generator out evenly, right? So you don't want to put all your points in capacity and try and cap capacity out. Now, the other thing to bear in mind, depending on the depth that you're at, as you can see here, I can't upgrade this anymore. I can't upgrade this anymore. There's no upgrade for this until I go down lower. And uh, as you can see, this is capped out until I go down lower and the lower you go, the more you can increase, but because the maximums increase based on the depth that you're at. Now, that being said, you should have these balanced out. So what I would do is get Azurite, put a couple points into here, then put a couple points in the light radius, then put a couple points in the darkness, then come back and put a couple points into sulfite capacity, then put some more points in the light radius, then put some more points in the darkness resistance. Rinse and repeat. This is basically how you do this from league start as well. So you'll start your white tier maps 
you'll start basically hoping for Nico missions and the other way to sustain it early on is going to be relying on Karak. Unfortunately, he's going to be the most useful. So in doing volumes of maps, you're going to get a lot more access to Karak missions um, or master missions through Karak, uh, which we go here. So we're going to be pretty reliant on these missions for some time, unfortunately. And these will stack up more as you complete atlas mapping with this node on here so mining partnerships will allow for that to increase now what all hands will do is it'll increase the probability of having nico just arrive in maps but it'll skim your ability to be able to accumulate these missions and can be a negative so just keep that in mind anyway that's basically what my strategy is um, without stepping it through further explaining it that way is probably the easiest way that i can explain it and sort of visually represent it there's no one particular right answer. It's just going to be balancing out your Voltastic generator enough so that you can sustain different areas. And then if you realize you need more flares, you put some points into flares. If you need realize that you need more dynamite because you're cracking more walls, then you put some more points into dynamite. So on, so on, rinse and repeat. Anyway, that's more or less my strategy from the start of League and or at any point in time when I'm delving early on in the, uh, in the piece. And I would start doing that from white tier maps. I wouldn't start doing that while you're in the campaign. So finish the campaign, and the first thing you should do is balance out your resistances, balance out your armor stat, so at least you can push, you know, low depth. Okay, so the next question I get a lot is, how do I sustain Delve? Really, really simple. Now, I'll show you what my Atlas is next, but I'll show you what I do to sustain Delve. So at all times, I have a stash deposit of an absolute metric ton of scarabs for just rusted sulfite scarabs. Now, the reason why I use rusted, not any other form like polished or anything, number one price of those is just not worth it. Um, and you can get like seven to 8,000 um, sulfite from one rusted scarab from one juiced up map um, that you run. Uh, so uh, when you've got Wandering Path, so basically I just go into bulk buy on the POB website, I'll go down to scarabs then I'll look for sulfide, as you can know, know the exact position of it. I'll look, and then, you know, you can go minimum buy of stock 50, and then you can just go in and buy an absolute ton in bulk. Now, you'll be making plenty of currency as far as, like, small currency like Chaos and Delve anyway, um, so this isn't too bad. Now, sometimes they get uh, a bit price gougy, so you just take off the filter, and you just need to have a look and see what stores people have got in stock. So, at the moment, their price has gone up to 1 to 3, um, and that, or one to two, it just depends on the sellers. Um, yeah, one to five is ridiculous. Now, if that goes up, that's just a hyperinflation scenario and people are playing a lot more Delve uh, and or things are getting rarer or the price of Resonators goes up. So the price of Scarabs goes up as well, but that levels out at the end of the day because, you know, it's a buyers and sellers market. But anyway, um, so what I'll do is I'll just buy a stack of these, you know, basically if the, you see this guy from like 97, you're like, oh, cool, whatever. I've got that currency. I'll go and buy that stack. And then I'll just have 10 loaded up in my um, in my map device at any point in time, which I currently don't have. Um, and the other way that you can go around it, because obviously as you do that, if you don't have your, um, if you don't have your all hands selected, then you'll also generate uh, master missions as well. And you can use these as well to generate early sulfite. So that's how I sustain my, my delves um, all the way through. And if you wanted to know how I juice my maps, some things that you need to remember is number one, make sure you have all of your void stones um, sextant up to, uh, because that'll increase your, with pack uh, with packs that for some reason, at least I don't know if it's a placebo effect, tends to increase the amount of sulfite you get. The other thing is if you're going to do your maps, uh, just make sure that, so let's take a random map, right? Let's just uh, do that. All right, so you take your white map, so you're going to 20% that map. So four chills, which you get a lot in Delve, 20% uh, that map, then hit it with the mod. And the other thing that you can do is also use your sacrifice fragments, which I think give you 5% increased quant, and then you just pop it in there, run your either your scarab or your um, or your mission. And then make sure you can either have Eater of Worlds Progress. I usually just run Maven on mine. Um, and then, yeah, that's basically all there is to it to sustaining Delve. Really easy. It's relatively cheap compared to other strategies, though it is getting more expensive because the price of fossils are getting more expensive. The price of resonators are getting more expensive. So Scarab farmers are going to gouge us pretty hard on that one. 
But that's basically all I do to sustain my delve um, throughout the game. And I just buy them in stacks of like 100 once I've banked up a few hundred chaos. And you'll get all that um, that currency back with what you'll gain out of uh, out of delve anyway. So it'll pay for itself in the long run. But yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Okay, so the next one that, uh, that people ask me is map setup. All right, let's talk about it. All right, so I'm on a wandering hand setup right now. Jesus Christ, as you can see. You make a lot of currency just get spare you'll see more messages come in so it's selling quite a lot so for anyone who's played wandering path what it basically means is you take this node here and you get a hundred percent increased effect of small atlas passive nodes now as you'll see i don't have any major passive nodes on here but uh we don't need those at this stage so then we basically just level up all of our quant knowing that quant affects the amount of sulfite as far as i understand on maps and also these uh, effect modifiers so it goes from two to four percent and then also double drops. Now I'm doing a bit of uh, altar farming here. Uh, I also get a lot more crack missions and I do delirium as well in my maps. And let's just load up a map and have, and I'll show you just how much sulfite you'll get from set it, this setup. So we'll just turn the sound up slightly, just enough so it's not too loud. Actually, I don't even know. Uh, so let's take Underground River as a great example, okay? So I would generally just go hit that, get the right mods on here, hit it with a chisel, right? So we 20% that bad boy. Now we don't want no life, life regen, that's really bad. Uh, curse effect, yep, that one should be fine. All right, so then I'll take that in. I'll basically go boop, all right? Now, if I've got a mission, bam. If I don't, I'll put it in a scarab. So we just run that. Now, the other thing we need to make sure is that we also have sextants running. So we'll grab some sextants and you ask, how do I have so many? Uh, they drop from cities and delve quite regularly. So we also want to make sure that, ah, oh, see, this is a good one here. So it already contains Nico, so we don't lose a mission. And then we basically want to have uh, pack size. So yeah, additional pack size. So sometimes you'll get a Nico mission in there and that'll save you missions as well. So we don't even need to do that. So then we run our map. Keeps me messaging for fossils constantly. That's a great example of running video. All right. So then we'll just go in and we'll basically hit the map up. So we're not going to do that. So what you'll see, so you can see the huge amount of sulfite you get just from one node there. So we'll just blast this map out of the way. And so we got to 15,000 there. All right, so we get to 18.3 thousand. So we're getting three to three and a half thousand um, with each node. All right, so we went up to about 20 thousand. So we started at what, 13 thousand, 14 thousand, something like that or less. And we went all the way up to 20 thousand and just running three points on a wandering path setup. So realistically, we have a cap of like 42, 43 thousand. Um, so off the back of that, what that's indicating to me is that 46,000. So we do like four to five maps for a full 46,000 sulfite, which is pretty damn efficient if you don't, uh, if, if you ask me. Um, so that's basically how I, yeah, sustain delve with that setup. That's the effect of Wandering Path at the end of the day. So Wandering Path is really, really useful. Um, yeah, I'll put a, a link to this tree in the description as well. So I'll put it up in the POE, whatever it is, thing for trees, atlases, and uh, and I'll give you my tree so you've got access to it as well. I also do invitation farming with this tree as well because I like playing invitation. But yeah, that's basically my atlas setup um, if you wanted to know. Okay, so delving strategies. And we'll talk about the loot currency farming strats after this part. So there are what I would consider two primary strategies to the way that you play delve. The first being is you're either going to go down, which means going, you know, further down, obviously, or you're going to go horizontal, which is the one that I tend to lean towards more so than often. Now, uh, I'm not going to cover off on deep delve in this one. So generally my comment around depth diving in delve is go as far as you can go. And if you start dying a lot, then you need to hone it back in maybe 20 to 30 to 40 levels. Um, and then you need to look to how do I make my character better? How do I improve my defenses? How do I up my damage? Different things like that. Some ways to do that is you could have a look on Path of Building uh, on PO, uh, POE Ninja, have a look and see what other players are doing um, and go from there. 
If you want to know more about Deep Delve, I don't particularly cover Deep Delve because I don't find it as fun as playing Delve to like 600 depth. Um, and I make tons of currency in my method, obviously, hence this video. But if you have a look at either a video Travic put up, and I'll put a link to both their videos in the description, or Connor Converse, uh, or One Mana Left is his other name on Twitch. Um, those guys have been pushing Deep Delve and have a little bit more info on that. That being said, we have a lot of content in the Out Filthy Exile Discord as well. Um, and we've got Mario in there, myself, and a bunch of other players going into Deep Delve as well with Bone Shatter builds. Um, hence my other build that I put was Leak Started with Bone Shatter. So you can have a look in there in the what we call the Bone Zone um, or the Delve Tips. And there's a ton of information that you'll find in there as well around Deep Delving and whatnot. But for the purpose of this video, we're not going to look at deep delve. We're going to look at, at a more generalized strategy targeted towards, I guess, uh, players, to pay, you know, the more average player. Um, I tend to think deep delving requires a lot more time commitment. And generally, like in my case, I don't play one build every league. I play a number of builds. Um, so I consider about 600 depth a pretty good benchmark. Um, and that's, you know, you can go horizontal at 600. You can get a lot of kings. You can kill crystal kings and everything at that depth. Um, and you're going to make a ton of currency either way. As you can see, I'm not even 500 yet, and I'm getting messaged, you know, at, throughout most of this video um, for sales. Anyway, so talking about what my strategy is as a general rule, there's a few different ways that you can approach horizontal. So number one, the question that people tend to ask me is, what is the best depth, depth to farm? So my comment as an average rule is 250 to 350 for the average build, depending on whether or not you can do either or. If you're a squishier build, probably cap at 250. Now there are other builds that are squishy but use phasing, and we're not going to cover off on that. That's a video for another day, um, such as uh, Toxic Rain Pathfinders, um, which are really, really good at running phasing setups, dirt cheaper setup, and you basically just run through Delve. You don't have to actually fight absolutely everything, but you do enough damage with the TR to be able to take down Delve nodes. Now, how would I normally Delve might be the question. So for me right now, my character can handle anywhere from 400 to 700, I would say currently at its current iteration pending. Um, and generally when I Delve, I have two different methods that I'll Delve depending on what I'm going after. So Number one, um, and let's just load up some Delve because this is the easiest way to explain it. Um, I'll do the slow, uh, slow as you go sort of method, which is going in and farming darkness. Now, there's a lot of comments out there that say it's not efficient to farm darkness. For me, I just prefer to do it. I'm in the habit of it. I like it. I think it is profitable. And that's where you find a lot of fossils. Now, for other people, they'll blaze saddle and just go node to node. In particular, target farm the Azurite cavity nodes because that's going to be the quickest means. So if I'm doing this method right, and generally you take a much longer um, delve column, as I would call it, you would basically go in and then basically when you see a pass here and you see a crawler go off, the crawler will never travel more than your map distance, right? So it'll stop there. And so a lot of the time when I'm delving, I'm actually looking at the minimap because I'm trusting that my character isn't going to get completely destroyed. Um, and then beyond that, so see the darkness is kicking in now, so you want to be out, out of the darkness. But this is where you'll use your flare, and then I'll go up, and I'll basically drop a flare and go, oh shit, there's nothing here. And then I'll run down, I'll go back to the crawler, and I'll sort of always stay more or less at the crawler's side. And then basically follow the crawler. Okay, we can see in the distance here, right? Oh, damn, we've got Azurite capacity. Azurite cavities here so we want to collect these we drop a flare the other thing to note i always travel with flares so now i'll push up here and then see when we get to a point like this this is getting dangerous because the path back is getting muddy and also if you don't have phasing which i use a quartz flask you get stuck and you will die and this is how people tend to die so this is pushing a bit too far as well so then i go okay i'm too far away from my source of survival being my crawler so i'll come back up so we'll then check this side, nothing in here, and then we'll hit the node. And that's basically all I'm looking for. I'm looking for where the, where the crawler diverges off and goes in a different direction. And then basically what I'll do is go the opposite direction and then run back to the crawler. But it's like a, it's like a go fetch scenario. Think of it like that. And so generally, if you're looking to farm darkness, that's the easiest way to farm within the darkness. Now we'll do another column here, being this node here, which is a little longer. And I'll show you a bit in a bit more detail. So this this is a bit of a longer column. So this one isn't like straight up, you know, right next to it. So 
We're not going to go down that path because we'll probably get rolled. So we'd run down here. Now you can run ahead of the crawler. It will speed up to catch up with you. But see here, right? So think of it like going, hey, bro, uh, can you just wait outside for a minute? I'm just going to run inside the house and go and pick up some stuff. So then I'll run into the darkness and then I'll pop a flare up here. Okay, cool. See, we get the straight raw chaos drop. Now, if you're a, a less you know, a less experienced player, your raw chaos drop early up is pretty profitable. So, all right. So we see here it's going down this way. We can see it's going down here. So then we're going to go here. Oh, we got a wall. This is actually a great example. So we pop a flare at the wall. We throw a piece of dynamite at it. We sit there. We pop another flare as we run into the room. And then we collect the loot and then we run out. That's basically the strat. Now... You can sit in the darkness for a bit. See, I'm doing the same thing here. I'll pop a flare, resonator stash. We just made currency there. That's easy chaos. It's like six, seven chaos, whatever it might be. Um, and then basically we run in. But that's basically also the strategy I enact when I deal with walls. So I throw a flare at the wall first and that gets rid of, because you cannot, so one thing to remember, you cannot damage enemies in the darkness. That's another thing you need to know about Delve. So you always need to be within the light to damage enemies. So see, perfect fossil, 10 chaos right there. Um, then we go in, we pop a flare. Okay, nothing down here but dynamite. We'll go in and have a look. Phasing does the rest of the work. But then we run back out. We run back to the crawler. Oh, crawler's going off this direction. Oh, we got another wall. Bam, hit it again. We pop another flare. We got some aberrants. We can sell these for like one or two C a piece. So, so we got about 10 to 12 C sitting there as well. So we've already made what? 30C, something like that. And then, oh, crawler is going this way. Bam. So we go back up this way. Nothing here. We don't need to pop a flare if there's no wall. Uh, we've got another dense fossil a deposit here. As you can see at 400, it gets pretty profitable. So crawler again is going up here. So then we'll go down into here. We'll pop it. Well, we're out of flares. We're shit out of luck. Now, that this is a good example. So when you run out of flares, don't keep going into the darkness unless you've got a character that can do it like this character can so i can walk into the darkness and then basically do whatever i want um so at this stage i'll go do i want to lose xp um considering how much it costs to get into delve in the first place and time no so then i'll just run to the node quickly and then basically take out whatever's on the node in this case these enemies are all weak anyway nothing can kill me at 400 it's gonna have to really try hard to do that so we'll just kill everything. There we go. Got some more fossils there. Okay. Got the claws there. All right. So that's that's like my slow strategy um, to how I would delve if you're going to crack walls and whatever. So basically, you're looking for where the crawler goes, and then you're going to diverge in the opposite direction. You're going to go and fetch. And then you're going to go back to the crawler, so on, so on, rinse and repeat. Now, people ask me, you know, how do you find the walls? That's all there is to it. And to be honest with you, it's just getting confident enough with your build to be able to go, yeah, I can do that. If you're not confident with your build, you're not going to be inclined to run into the darkness for longer. And the other thing is you just need to get a feel for how long until the darkness kicks in. It takes a few seconds before the darkness starts to get you if you're not within light range. Um, and then once that happens, yeah, it'll pretty quickly rip you apart if your darkness resist isn't up to level. And if you are dying to darkness, increase your your darkness resistance straight away. Like any resistance, you need to be able to survive it. Um, but that's basically my slow and go strategy. But there is another one that other people do, and I'll show you exactly what that is if you really want to fastly burn between points. And for people who are finding it hard to find Crystal Kings, if that's your target, you can use a strategy to speed up the process. And so we're going to be clearing a lot of ground, but we're going to be ignoring all the side areas altogether. Okay, so let's find another biome worth doing. Let, let's do this one here because it's it's a nice long one. It's probably got some diverging areas. Now, this works if you're playing a phasing character or if you're playing a really tanky character with good mobility and, and still have phasing. So you basically, instead of looking at the side areas, you're just going to go from node to node you're just going to ignore everything unless you see something there that's actually valuable. Um, and then basically just run through to get the objective points. So if you see that, you go, oh yeah, I'll grab that. Uh, then you go, no, that's not worth it. Now, some people will basically discriminate to, you know, what different things are there. So we can see something there. I'm a stickler for just grabbing stuff. And so the, the, 
what we're farming here then is the azurite and so in with this particular strategy where you just blast through you simply just want to be farming azurite nodes or targeted fossil nodes at the end of the day so we'll complete this node there we go so the objective here is all of this azurite and i'm about to explain why this is really important and what you can do with that in the next part of the video but that's the sec that's the two ways that you could approach horizontal um, and again, like optimally, target between 250 to 350. If you can go lower, go to 500. As you go lower, the higher the probability is that you're going to get a biome with a Crystal King being prim primeval, and that's where we're going to make some serious bank at the end of the day. Anyway, let's talk about the actual strategies of how we make the currency um, to flip it into divines. Okay, so currency strategy one. Finally, we get into the meat and bones. All right, so we've been farming a lot of Azurite, right? As we can see. Well, we'll be able to check that if we go to Nico. All right, purchase. So we have 17.2 thousand Azurite. You might be asking, how do we make currency with this? Well, really, really easy. So we're going to ignore all of these, right? These are all inflated prices. They're ridiculous. But if you're running Path of Building, uh, if you're running Awaken Peewee Trade like I am, You'll be able to see, well, these little bad boys are selling for 2.1 or 2.5 chaos per uh, resonator. So all we're going to do is control shift and we're just going to buy a ton of them. And then we're going to go back to our stash tab. And in my case, I have a Delve stash tab, which is set to public. So you just hit public, each thing priced individually. Um, and then I'm going to just dump all of it into my stash tab. Now... This is where the divines part comes in. I used to say sell it for chaos. If you if you need chaos, right, you can do that. You can sell it for 2.5 chaos each, or you can sell it for, you know, we can change it here. If we wanted to do it for chaos, we could do 25 to 20 or 28 to 20, right? So 28 chaos for 20 resonators. Think of it like that. So before the hot before the dash, 28. That's what the chaos we want. And then for the number of whatever. Now, in this case. We know what the price is based on awaken poe trade and we can see here div bulk up here right so one divine for 80 resonators right and we currently have 141 resonators so we could undercut the market and make one divine per 81 resonators and basically now we just wait until someone buys a div worth of resonators and go and bank the div easiest strategy in the world you can do the same thing with uh, with hollow fossils. So in this case, I've got 160, but I could sell for one div two of these fossils, and I could just offload this for straight up div. And eventually, depending on the market rate, and the only thing that you'll need to do is double check the rate. So I could sell it for 80 chaos a piece, or I could sell it for 0.5 of a div, which is one is to two rate, um, which is exactly that there. And it actually tells you exactly what it looks like so div versus bulk um, and you just plug that number into here when you right click on it and bob's your uncle done and you can do this with everything so you can price everything like this however you want to price it ultimately at the end of the day now the other thing i'd say is if you're going to bulk sell resonators try and cut a profit over and do it in bulk so if you wanted to sell these for eight you could probably sell them for you know a little higher than that um or you know up to you um, but that's basically bulk selling. So you can bulk sell one div for bulk resonators and then just wait for someone to message you when they come on the market or whatever it is. You could sweeten the pot a little more and you could undercut the market and go 82 so someone gets more value for money. Now, as you've seen, these are really easy to come by. You can farm tons of Azurite um, in Delft just by hitting Azurite nodes and targeting to targeting, um, like running node to node. And the further down you go, the more Azurite you're going to get. So if you can get lower down, this is how a lot of big Delve player, like low depth or, you know, when I say low depth, I mean deep Delve players tend to make a lot of Divines because they just start printing stacks of Chaotic Resonators um, for Divines. It's really simple. It's not the most efficient thing to make currency in Delve. Um, that's going to be the third strategy, which I tend to invoke more than often but it's a really good strategy to make currency. So that's the first strategy that I'll give you um, that you can do. Now, if you're just a beginner player, what I would say to uh, anyone just starting out, um, farm the early depths of Delve, do the same strategy, offload it for chaos. And in fact, that's what, exactly what I do when I league start. 
Um, so people ask me, how do I fund my builds? That's basically the easiest way to fund your build. Now, some people hold at the start of league and don't sell until the second week. I would say like you need the currency to get your character to a level where it can farm deeper depths. So take the loss early on with the added benefit. You know, it's the old, you got to spend money to make money scenario. So you're going to lose some currency um, at the very start, but you're going to have a stronger character that can farm more currency. So you're upskilling your character if you want to put that into the real business world sort of talk of things. Um, anyway, that's the first strategy. Really simple, really easy. Um, and this will work across the board and has worked every league for me for God knows how many leagues. Um, Nico always sells one socket resonators, by the way. They've never changed that. Okay, so the next strat that we could look at could be farming particular nodes. Um, now, I'll talk about this to a few elements. Number one, you have what are called time loss cavern nodes. These are going to drop glyphic fossils. You have abyssal uh, depths nodes, I think they're called. They're going to drop abyssal fossils. Oh, hollow nodes, sorry. They're going to drop uh, hollow fossils. Um, you've got magma chamber, which we'll see. Ah, uh, sorry, humid fissures. Are going, to, uh, are going to drop fractured fossils. Uh, you've also got magma nodes as well. Uh, if we can find one around here, there should be one. So Abyssal Depths Crystal Spire, that's going to drop your hollow fossils. Um, you've also got, where is Genix? Oh, sorry, we'll just make a sale there. So you've also got what are called Molten Cavity or, and Magma Fission nodes, which are, I think, faceted fossils, and that's where Genix is going to spawn. Now, beyond that as well, some other things to be aware of in Delve when you're farming. Uh, look for um, hex nodes or curse nodes. So these, uh, these contains chaos item nodes. In particular, this could be a chaos conversion item. So like a helm or something like that. So Fizz converted to chaos, for example. Um, the other thing to keep in mind as well, if you see, uh, where are they? Uh, necromancer nodes as well so plus one specter chests are going for one div if you can get an, a fractured aggressive roll on a one which can drop on these you could probably sell that for like 10 div because it's super rare they only drop in delve there's a whole heap of things that only drop in delve um, and then the other thing would be like curse nodes uh, the other thing could be you know uh, elemental nodes like fire nodes You'll see them uh, beast nodes, so these animalistic nodes, so animalistic items like aspect of crab, aspect of the um, spider, so on, so on. Uh, fundamentally, these are specialized nodes, and then you could farm them in order to get specialized items. And let's just find one and do one as an example so you can see what I mean. All right, so this is a magma chamber node um, or a magma fissure node where Ganix will spawn. Ganix is probably one of the hardest hitting bosses in the game. There he is. Um, and so this has a guaranteed drop for faceted uh, fossils. And this is why I talk about like special nodes are fossils that in particular, shit, he hits like a truck. Now with this one, if you plan a melee, a character, you're going to be shit out of luck. But yeah, uh, there we go. Faceted fossil, guaranteed faceted fossil every single time, which will sell for about 25 chaos right now on the market. So really profitable. Um, but that's one example of like a specialized fossil node that you could chart, you could have a go. Let's have a look at a different one for something else now. All right, so this node here is a necromancer node. And the reason why I'm calling this out is specters are actually really good this league, or they've sort of come back with the new league mechanic with the new specters. So <clears throat> I've sold every single plus one specter chest that I have had, whether good or bad, because plus one specter chest can only drop in delve same as plus two specter gem um boots as well i think there's still a thing can only drop in delve as well which is really useful for builds that are maximizing specter builds so what we can see here is see how it has grim armor and fingers crossed they got a plus one specter chest so we've got shield uh aura gems convoking wand minions are more aggressive which is a pretty good wand uh, more armor, so plus one skeletons, uh, plus two socketed, um, so that socketed minion gems, and plus one raised zombie, which that could be worse armor too, and we get a bunch of bound fossils too. So just another one to look out for, and I'll show you a couple of other specialized nodes as well that you could potentially make currency out of. All right, and this is a lightning node. So, see, we have charged armor, charged jewelry. Hopefully, we get something decent in here, too. 
Uh, and this is predominantly how you get like cursed rings or physical to lightning armor. You can also get cold items as well. So cold nodes, fire nodes, chaos nodes, all of the above, um, you can get them. And these are the same sort of nodes that these drop from. Specifically, these are, these items can only drop in Delve. Um, but you can get things with like hunter mods and stuff like that to be able to do curse effects on hit. Um, but see what we get out of this. So, uh, didn't get anything special there, nor there, but there's that. Uh, jewelry. So, uh, fizz damage converted to lightning. Same with that one. Same with that one. Again, didn't get anything very useful there. Uh, and then we got one other here, charged armor. So, yeah, lightning, 5% reduced uh, lightning damage taken as a fracture. You can get some pretty cool fractures here. Uh, 10 percent of damage taken as hits from lightning uh, as 10 percent physical damage converted to lightning damage taken hit uh, from hits um yeah so you can get some really cool node uh, really cool drops out of there in particular last league this was an easy way to get like uh while everyone was playing hex blast this was a really easy way to get like curse rings so you could play um, profane proxy and stuff like that and have multiple curses for hex blast but uh, yeah, this is just another example of another node that you could take. But overall, like there's nodes like this all through Delve. And some of these rings, um, I think it was like Lightning on Hit currently is like, uh, I think I saw one for 1.5 div yesterday. Um, so if you're aware of the crafts that can pop up in here and you can price check it, um, you can arguably make a shit ton of currency just from farming everything outside of resonators and fossils. But just bearing in mind that, yeah, there are specific target nodes in Delve that you can farm for both fossils and for specific items that only drop in Delve. And these are a few of those examples. Okay, so the final strat that I'm going to talk about is boss busting. So there are three bosses in Delve. Uh, basically, the Architect, which is the Val Architect, is worth doing um, because it can drop a new map fragment at the moment or Doriani's Machinarium, which is really profitable. Um, and that's obviously, you get those from the, the Val boss nodes down here, which are, these here are Val outposts, so you get these from that particular boss. Um, and there's probably a couple ticking around in my tree somewhere, because uh, he tends to rear his ugly head out pretty often. But anyway, I can't find him at the moment. So, that's the first one. It's not bad. The other thing that you can get dropping from there are what are called Precursor Emblems. Um, and in fact, all the bosses can drop what are called Precursor Emblems, which are these Meadow, Mountain, and Valley Rings. So, obviously, green denoting if it's a, um, if it's a dex drop. Now, one thing I will say, if you can get a Precursor Emblem with a plus one Frenzy Charge, these are valuable as hell. So, if we typed in Precursor Emblem, let's go, um, what would that be, uh, Topaz Ring. Um, and then if we had Frenzy Charge, Maximum Frenzy Charge, we can't even find them on the market. They're super rare. Um, so we want Ring and we want Unique. So what we'll probably find is, there we go. So if you found a Precursor's Ring with a plus one Frenzy Charge, you could charge anywhere from 25 to 49 to 150 div plus one power charges, whatnot. Priest Cursor Rings are incredibly valuable and they are not in great abundance because they only drop in Delve, from Delve. Uh, and they drop off the bosses. So if you wanted to farm every boss, I'd recommend it's probably worth it if you've got a character that can do that. Um, so the way that these rings work is you have a meadow, a mountain, and a valley ring. And the combination of these creates these rings. And I'll put a link in the description to this as well. Um, and that creates the ring now there are variants of the ring as well so you can have one of each type so dex intelligence or strength or three strength or three dex or three intelligence or any other combination as long as it is a meadow a valley and a mountain uh, variant so you cannot have a duplicate of any one particular ring then you can create different variations of the same rings um, in particular like you saw it's tens of divs into hundreds of divs if you get a plus one frenzy plus one power charge but this is only one element of boss busting in delve the biggest one is all's uprising so of the boss kills i've done this league so i think i've done six crystal kings of those six i've had three or four i've had three drop all's uprisings 
I've already made around 30 div from those uprisings. And let me explain. So all's uprising. We don't need that. Uh, all's uprisings only drop from Crystal King. And for example, we can have what is called Envy. Grants Envy has no reservation. This ring is, uh, this amulet is currently worth 80 divine. If you get this amulet, that's your league made. Now we've got guys in the Discord that have had this drop. As you can see, not enough players play Delve. That's why I love Delve. This is incredibly rare. But this is not the only role that's worth something. So Grace, if you have Grace, has no reservation. So arguably this is a better amulet. We're talking 10 to 12 div, anywhere up to 16 div, low abundance uh, or low volume on the market. So very rare. Determination. Currently 17 div. Now, when I say they're rare, okay, they're rare because nobody's farming them. They're not rare because they don't exist. Um, they're rare because nobody's farming them. Now, if you had an unID'd Alls Uprising, you could sell them from anywhere up to, I think, 6 div at the moment. Um, and so you could also have purity. So I had purity of uh, elements. Uh, purity of elements. When I can spell. Has no reservation. Uh, 12 div. And the last one that I'll say is... Haste, which haste used to be really, really valuable as well. 14 to 18 div. So if that's not a motivator to go and find Crystal Kings in Delve, I don't know what is. And if enough people watch this video, it could drop the market price down. But that's why Crystal King is the best boss in Delve. I'd stack it. You have a two is to three ratio that an all's uprising will drop. Now there are shitty rolls. You can get vitality, clarity, or purity auras that can drop off of it um, outside of purity of elements. So purity of fire, purity of ice, whatever. That being said, there's such a high volume of quality drop pool from farming all's uprisings that there's a good probability when you gambit to an ID one. Um, or ID one, you'll get a decent roll. And in fact, all three rolls, I had a Malevolence, I had a Purity of Elements, and I had a Grace from all three that I had dropped this league. Um, so do the math. It's a good gamble if you can find it. Now, how available is the Crystal King? 130 depth beyond. The lower you go, the more viable it gets to have a drop on that. Um, the other thing he drops is Crown of the Tyrant. Now, again, because Spectres are really, really uh, valuable this league, uh, Crown of the Tyrant, if we can find it, is worth around 6 to 7 div on the market right now. And there is a guaranteed drop. It will either be a ring, it will either be a Crown of the Tyrant, or it will either be an All's Uprising. Take your pick, you will get one of them. It's I've never done an All where he has dropped crap. It's because it's a very specific item in a very specific, specific niche of the game. Um, and... He's a very specific boss. So if you're looking for him, you're going to make some bank. Which, and if anyone wants to know how I funded my builds, this is how I fund my builds every league. I farm out Crystal King and make a ton of bank. Even when the prices go down and they go down later in the league. And in fact, now that um, now that uh, our Ashes has been nerfed without the reservation, All's Uprisings are currently probably one of the best amulets in the game because it's a whole free aura, like no reservation aura. But anyway, boss busting, two thumbs up. That's why I love killing Crystal Kings. It's profitable, it's easy, and you can do it from depth 130. Probability is much lower at depth 130 been popping up, but I've had him pop up and under depth 200, so it is doable. And the pool doesn't discriminate. You could get an Envy at depth 131. Like, it's it's RNG at the end of the day. Anyway, boss busting, that's my final strat. I'll put a link to these in the description as well. Um, so you can see, you know, what the precursor rings are and whatnot. Um, and yeah, that's basically my third strat. Okay, so one of the other questions that I never really covered off in one of these videos and generally get asked a million times over is, what are builds that you could take down into Delve? Well, my comment there is, I have Divine Eye down at 500 to 600 depth Delve right now. So basically any build can be made into a delve build if you know enough about making defensive layerings work in your favor and output of damage. But, you know, if you're, I guess, a less experienced player and you just want a build that will up and run, 
Well, the easiest place is to come to PoE Ninja and literally change the depth setting on the ladder. And let's have a look at the builds that are up there. So the first one is Venom Gaia. And I'm going to say, don't play that build. The reason why is this guy's investment into this build is number one, Mage Blood, undeniable on Forbidden Fle Flesh and Flame, and then Original Sin. Now, for anyone who knows anything about PoE, he's easily got multiple mirrors in this build already. That's not tenable for the everyday player. I wouldn't go and replicate his build. You're going to have a bad time. This is an insane build that does an insane level of damage with basically maximum defensive uptime. And he probably dies a lot too playing the Zerka. But um, it, it's a pretty strong build. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend playing that. That's a bad metric to look at. Now the ones to look at are Bone Shatter. Ten generally tends to be the build that I would recommend. And in fact, I did do a League Suck. I put all three guides. We've got Mario in our Discord who, for anyone who knows Mario... Oh, he's doing mana stacking as well. There you go. He's already at 724 and Bone Shatter. So Mario last league was in like the top four in Bone Shatter last league. Um, so yeah, he's already doing mana stacking and Bone Zone. So yeah, there you go. Matabon, Squire. Man farms like a beast. Anyway, um, so Matabon, Bone Shatter tend to be very strong. As you can see, it tends to be the lowest depth builds right now. There is a Blight build ticking around. Um, which is okay, but not sure what the investment is of, of that, so don't ask me. Um, then, yeah, you might be able to see some other builds here, but generally tends to be either Bone Shatter or Mana Bond, other ones dominating the league in that field. Though, yeah, I will be around 600 with Divine Eyes, so I'll probably be one of the few builds that isn't running a, um, a Mana Bond or Bone Shatter build in a deeper depth of Delve right now. But anyway... Um, there are a number of Pathfinder builds that you could play, so you can filter this down further. So if we filter for Pathfinders, TR Pathfinders, so depth 900 right now. I don't know why that wasn't populating in there. Um, so TR Pathfinders, uh, Poison Molten Strike as well is a really good build. Uh, Blade Vortex to a degree as well is a really good build. I'm not going to recommend Blade Blast. I don't think it's a good build. Um, and yeah, so there are some other builds that you can get down there. Scourge Arrow is quite strong as well at the moment, so you've got to take it down there. Uh, Lightning Strike builds, really good. Um, Pathfinder, it tends to work on. Now, the reason why people use Pathfinder is predominantly because it basically has free Mage Blood um, in the way that the Flasking works on the Pathfinder. And so they just fully mitigate, mitigate physical damage. As you can see, All's Uprising is really valuable on these builds. But uh, yeah, you could have a look at any of these builds and just replicate them. Um, and yeah that's pretty much the go i don't particularly have any builds i'm going to say like i used to say vortex and righteous fire as a go-to but they're obviously no longer viable at a, at a cost-effective manner bone shatter if you don't know anything about delve at all or anything about the game and you're just learning and you want to build that can play it just go for bone shatter initially bone shatter is just a nice easy straightforward one now some people might say is slayer better than D jug yeah, Slayer's great in the campaign, but when it comes to Delve, you're only going to see Jugs going deep down, unless the Slayer's doing like 120 million DPS, but then getting one hit ain't fun in Delve anyway, so that's where the Jugs are a lot better. But that's a bit of a cover-off on the builds that you could play in uh, Delve, um, at least at this stage. Now, obviously, I go against that grain because I make builds that go into Delve, um, and they go pretty fairly reasonable in Delve. Um... And I use shit like Divine Eye because it's fun. But um, yeah, so that that's probably a video for another day uh, explaining how you can make a build that shouldn't realistically be able to delve, go into delve and do really well. But that's a bit of a cover off on builds that I would probably recommend um, and a bit of an idea of where you could look to get some ideas as well. Um, and then you could go in and see, okay, these builds are on here. Are there any guides online about them? Or, you know, has Jorgen made any guides this league for any characters that have gotten a 350 to 500 depth delve? you'll probably find very different skill sets being used from my channel on Delve um, on a regular basis. But yeah, that's pretty much all I'd say there. Okay, so I hope this video sort of helps you sort of figure out how to get Delve working for you um, and also how to make currency in Delve and gives you some more ideas of strategies that I use. Um, now, for the Crystal King fight, I do have a whole separate guide on how to beat that fight and I think my video is even somehow linked in the wiki, which I did not do. Um, which is really cool either way. 
Uh, so I'll put links to all of that information in the description as well as any other sources I can think of that you could refer to, the cheat sheet link and all that that you saw in this video as well. I'll give you all of that. Um, but yeah, anyway, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Now, the only thing that I haven't covered off on is how do you find um, hidden nodes? The only, like where the path isn't revealed in Delve, the only time where I farm those is if they're Crystal Kings. Any other circumstance, it's a waste of time. Like you could spend as much time as you want trying to find a fossil node in there or whatever, or a glyphic node or whatever in a time lost. But to be real, real with you, you could probably spend less sulfite and less time just finding another node than trying to do that um, and find the wall and walk through the darkness. So I haven't covered off on that in this video, unfortunately. But yeah, anyway, until next time, make sure you uh, follow the stream, uh, like and sub to the channel. And uh, I'll see you guys in Delve and, uh, and Divine Iring, hopefully in the next day or so. All right, I'll, uh, I'll leave you guys to it and have a good one.